Jeff Rorda. You have seen him on CNN, on Fox, on MSNBC. He's been on this show numerous times. Uh, Jeff Rorda, you are the St. Louis City Police Union president, correct? Uh, business manager. Business yes. manager. You are still a um, working police officer as well, right? No, no, I'm, I'm retired. Uh, I actually am an employee of the union. You're an employee of the union. Okay. You uh, were everywhere a year ago during the Ferguson situation. One year later, you have written a book. The book is called Ferguson, The War on Police. Thanks for joining us. Right. No, glad to be here. Um, let's first start with the title. Pretty provocative. Um, pretty inflammatory. No? Well, provocative for sure. Uh, maybe inflammatory to some. But uh, the book is meant to take on uh, the the situation in Ferguson head on, and I don't shrink away from that. Was it as bad as Afghanistan? I mean, was it lawlessness? Was there, it, no, were uh, there, was it a tribal region of St. Louis City? It, it, or was, a, it was a war zone, uh, I mean, to be sure, and that is uh, the point of the title, and, and one of the points of the book is that we have to be honest about uh, what happened, and uh, that these things can't be lost to history. Uh, the book is called Ferguson, The War on Police. This is self-published. It is. And where can we get a copy of it? Uh, it's on Amazon and Kindle, or you can get it on my website, www.thewaronpolice.com. You write in the preface, uh, if you're unwilling to at least consider the blue view, view, then close this book now, because this isn't some para-masturbatorial academic exercise, nor is it some Pollyanna pie-in-the-sky, can't-we-just-get-along indulgence of liberal white guilt. This is a gritty, unabated view from the streets that are made safe by America's greatest heroes, the men and women who pin a badge on their chest every day and place their lives in jeopardy to defend the people of this country. If you're looking for something else, buy a different book. Right. This, I, uh, this is an unabashed police point of view of Ferguson. It is. Okay. Um, let's start with the uh, overall narrative of Ferguson and the media. How right or wrong did the media get Ferguson? Uh, they got it wrong, particularly in those early days. Uh, you know, the media coverage was so heavily slanted. And, and you know, we, we as law enforcement own that a little bit. You know, I was, uh, from day one, I was saying, we're getting our butts kicked in the media. We've got to get out there and tell our side of the story uh, or the or the vacuum's going to be filled by by this other noise out there, and it took us about a week to to step up. But once we did, uh, I, I'm pretty proud of the the way that uh, guys like me and Gabe Crocker, who I know is a regular on your show, and right. and others uh, came to the defense of law enforcement and set the record straight and 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 sort of pecked away at this hands up, don't shoot myth and this police militarization myth and the other misinformation that came out of uh, the mouths of people like Dorian Johnson, right. who in the book I call uh, Mrs. O'Leary's cow, uh, you know, kicked over the lantern. He the, was he was patient zero. He was, yeah, he was he yeah. was the the uh, outbreak monkey. And if we go if we go back to the very beginning, he goes on Lawrence O'Donnell's show mm -hmm. immediately on MSNBC, and Lawrence O'Donnell spreads the wildfire myth: right. hands up, don't shoot. Right. Dorian Johnson tells that story. That story still lives today it when does. we're seeing that in Colombia, but it never happened. It didn't. And, you know, that is, an, again, I'm, I'm really worried about some of this being lost to the iris of history because despite the fact that, that we know from uh, physical evidence and ballistic evidence and autopsies and a grand jury finding and Eric Holder's own Justice Department finding, that Darren Wilson acted properly, that hands up is a myth, uh, that, that none of that stuff happened, but still some people embrace it as if it's the unabated, un, un, uh, refutable truth. Jonathan Capehart, who was a Washington Post reporter who was on MSNBC, espousing hands up, don't shoot. When the Justice Department report came out, he wrote a column saying, I was wrong. Right. Hands up, don't shoot. I, he, I, never happened. I right. want it to happen. I wanted to believe it. But in this instance, they, they, they backed the wrong horse, in a sense. They did. And I, I was actually impressed by the Washington Post, even though they were one of the first media outlets to get it wrong. Uh, once it was clear to them that they had gotten it wrong, they, they did the mea culpas that I thought a lot of, uh, a lot of media didn't. Yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, Darren Wilson mm -hmm. and the night itself. Sure. What did Darren Wilson do wrong, if anything? Uh, 
I'd say nothing. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, there's a chapter in the book called We Are Darren Wilson, and it's, it's sort of uh, meant to describe the way that cops feel about the in- in- incident. And, you know, I wear the I, I Am Darren Wilson bracelet. A lot of cops do. I started wearing it the day that the Justice Department said that my cops couldn't wear it. Uh, and it, what that bracelet means, what that expression means, is that any of us would have done the same thing in that situation. It's tragic. Uh, it's horrible that it came to a killer be killed situation, but that's not on Darren. That's on Michael Brown. Uh, b- knowing what we know now, even the Justice Department has said Eric Holder, who came to S- Missouri and St. Louis and said we're going to find justice for Michael Brown, in his final report said the same exact thing you said. Right. Although in his uh, in his press conference that day, he couldn't quite bring himself to say that. You know, twenty. Four-minute press conference. I've listened to it a dozen times. He spends two minutes talking about Darren Wilson being exonerated in very sort of uh, mixed, ambiguous language. Uh, expressions like "we we didn't have enough evidence to to prove any wrongdoing," and then he goes in this 22-minute tirade about uh, so-called bias-based policing in Ferguson, and it was really met. Uh, to obfuscate the the main finding that Darren Wilson was exonerated. Yeah, uh, Jeff Rorter, our guest, the book he has written called Ferguson: The War on Police. You mentioned one of the criticisms, uh, or the, at least uh, you guys were sort of didn't didn't necessarily communicate uh, early on, and that that void that 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 vacuum was filled by other voices. Right. Um, there's also criticism of the Ferguson police as well as other police that you didn't um, you were. Um, you didn't just tell your side of the story. You didn't tell the story, if you will. Does that make any sense? Well, you know, and, and I, I say in the, in the preface uh, as well, you know, I'm, I'm not the, uh, the angry protester. I'm, I'm not uh, the, the kid growing up on uh, tough streets. I'm not the mournful parents. Uh, this is my perspective, my opinion, and I don't hold it out as anything but that. Uh, but it's based on facts, not fiction or not wishful thinking. Now, but, but, but now a lot of police, Sam Dotson and others, when something tragic happens, they're holding a news conference right, right then and there, not necessarily with the news media, but with the angry mob. Right. Which I'm not so sure that's the smartest way to fix things. Well, you know, we're, we're learning lessons from Ferguson and its aftermath, and it is a very fluid process. Uh, I, 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 in the book, I called Chief Tom Jackson from Ferguson who I think was a great cop and worked with back in the 90s. Uh, I call him the canary in the coal mine for law enforcement because he didn't really do anything any differently than law enforcement had been doing for decades. But the world had changed. You know, the, the ground has shifted underneath our feet. And, you know, one of the lessons we've learned is, hey, as soon as you know anything, get it out there because if you don't, someone's going to tell uh, some other story that's that's going to be false and is going to cause you a problem. Right. Jeff Rorter, our guest, the book is called Ferguson, The War on Police. How much of this book could you tell all the stories? I couldn't. And, you know, I'm very protective of Darren, and uh, I, I didn't mean for this to be Darren's story. Darren owns that story. It's his to tell, and I hope he tells it, and I hope he sells a 100 times as many books as I do. Uh, but what I can tell you is... What I know about Darren Wilson as a, as a man and uh, that he's a good man. And, you know, I, I share that in there. I share the interview that I sat down and did with him. He's been a, a very gracious uh, person. And Is he uh, still uh, receiving death threats? Of course. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really unsafe for him and his family. Uh, and, and I think it'll, it'll be that way for some time. Does he still live in the area? Um, I'm, I, I, I just really not say that. Um, can you tell the whole backstory of... Governor Nixon, Chief Jackson, um, Chief Belmar, Sam Dodson, Mayor Slay, Charlie Dooley. Is that whole story laid out here, or are there still things you can't say? Uh, this is, you know, there, there are things I can't say, uh, but, and this is not meant to be an expose, uh, but, you know, I was at Ground Zero uh, in the foxhole for a lot of this, uh, and... Uh, frequently briefed both my role as a uh, police union leader mm-hmm. and as a state representative at the time. And, uh, you know, I share what I can, and I, I try to give people a, a good sense of, 
of what it was like out there. The book is called Ferguson, The War on Police. It seemed to me from where I was sitting that there was an internal war going on with the elected officials and the police themselves. So in a sense, the police, if this is a police story, you were fighting the protesters or trying to keep the streets safe while trying to fight the leaders during the day and the protesters at night. Yeah, and, you know, uh, I'm pretty hard on, on politicians uh, in, in the book, uh, although I do, I do avoid blaming them for the riots and the mayhem, just like I, I get angry when people blame the police. Rioters are the cause of riots. Looters are the cause of looting. Arsonists are the cause of arson, and I, I, don't, uh, I don't shift the blame. There was a uh, one night where the story was told on the show by people who were there who said that the police were told to stand down and allow a convenience store to be overrun by looters. Right. Do you agree with that story? Yeah, that, that's, that's accurate. Uh, you know, there was... It, law enforcement tried a different approach each and every night uh, throughout this uh, epic event, and... You know, it was everything from a very hands-on approach to a very laissez-faire approach and everything in between. And the results were always the same. There was always violence. There were always gunshots at police. There were always rocks and bottles and, 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 and uh, plastic bottles full of urine being thrown at police. Lot rioting, looting. Nothing changed no matter what the police tactics were. Yet nobody embraced that or, or took notice of the fact that the same things happened no matter what law enforcement did and they kept saying it's law enforcement's fault that these activities happen in the street that they somehow are, are, are antagonizing it and it's like well it's it's a good point you went from the tough tactics mm -hmm. to the hug to the hug it out tactics right. to the um to the um to the big huge uh anti-terrorist equipment to the to leaving those behind and no matter what the police did it was the same result every night. Right, and I would argue that the very worst results that we've seen in any of this was uh, in Baltimore where they decided to give the protesters space to destroy things. I mean, that was absolutely the worst outcome of any law enforcement approach. Uh, you know, and I would, I would posit that uh, law enforcement knows how to handle these situations, and if politicians and the Justice Department and the ACLU will get out of the way, Less people will get hurt. The streets will be safer. Forganistan is the name of the book. Forganistan. I apologize. I was saying it wrong. Forganistan, the war on police. Jeff Rorder, our guest. A couple more minutes. Um, the argument that I've made to people is that it was a proxy war and that you had factions. You had people coming in who had an agenda. You had people here who had an agenda. You had Republicans and Democrats who had an agenda. Right. You had a city, a, a county executive race that was coming right. up. Right. So it was a proxy war, and everyone had their hands in it, and everybody on the streets was a puppet for a larger issue. That's right. And uh, and I, I think I call it that in the book, as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, there are no winners in a proxy war because— you're not fighting over the the real issue that you, you're 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 uh, holding out uh, as as being the issue. Uh, there were a lot of anarchist groups here that uh, that could care less about Michael Brown, could care less about uh, hands up, don't shoot. They just want to see uh, our government devolve. Uh, there were a lot of people that were there looting that uh, that would have killed Michael Brown for his shoes if they'd have seen him the day before he died. Uh, they were just there to, to, to enrich themselves. They were there out of greed and uh, to, to um, make those folks into heroes, uh, as, as a lot of politicians did, is, is just nauseating. Um, yeah, as well as anarchists, as well as elected officials and leaders and people, right. quote unquote, in prominent positions. We're right. doing the same thing the anarchists were doing. Like moths uh, flocking to that spotlight. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the police and two, two things. You know what? Um, can you break through the... Can you hold through the break? Yeah, I'll stick around. Uh, Jeff Rorda, our guest. The book is called Forganistan, his uh, book, The War on Police. We can get the book where? Uh, www.thewaronpolice.com or Amazon and Kindle. You got it. Uh, Forganistan. Jeff Rorda, our guest, talking about Ferguson one year later. The untold story of Ferguson from the police point of view. 924, Big 550.